It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803-0930. Toll free at 1-800-616-9236. And cell calls are free at star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullius. Hey, everybody, this is Esther Gullius, the tax lady, and we have, like, 50 minutes to talk taxes and anything that would impact your finances to make sure you don't overpay. And let's face it, we are, we are looking at fall straight in the face, and we want to help you. And I'm joined in the studio with Tiffany uh, Fabian. Hey, Tiff. Hey there, Esther. How are and- you doing? And Christopher Fabian. Hello, Esther. And so this morning we did the walk for Roswell, which uh, no, Alzheimer's. Call it Alzheimer's. 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 Yeah. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Alzheimer's. It's purple. Yeah, well, you can see uh, Roswell Alzheimer's you know, for to help uh, me. Both terrible but I mean, diseases. It was it was a wonderful event, wasn't it? It was yes. great. It was, it was right by the zoo. So afterwards we went to the zoo, and it was great to see the turnout and all the people coming together for a great cause. You know. Yeah, so. that's wonderful. You know, uh, Buffalo is such a wonderful city. I mean, um, everybody's so supportive. And, you know, we've had such a wonderful s- summer. Too bad it was rainy today, but it, wait- it waited till after everybody walked. Yeah, that which was perfect. It couldn't right? have been better. Yes. So um, this show, we always have something that we'd like to talk about. Again, if you have any questions, so give us a call, 803-0930, 803-0930, star 930 on our cell phone. And our, our uh, subject for the, today is things you ought to do before the end of the year, and we keep kind of harping on that. I feel like a mother who keeps saying to her kids, now, did you brush your teeth? Did you brush your teeth? You know, but before we talk about that, we have several things coming up. We have our tax school, right? That's right. That's right. It starts about October 12th, 13th, and it's a great opportunity to learn taxes from A to Z. Um, we had our seminar this week, and there were like 25 people that came, and just it was just a great turnout, and we talked about it, and uh, we just, they, people were surprised. You know, we interjected a lot of stories and people were like, you know, it's the stories that really get you, you know? Right. That's true. Well, that, because really taxes are just a reflection. You know, your tax return reflects the life that you led. Right. Because some things are deductible, some things are taxable. All those things that happen during the year end up to be, have some type of impact on your tax return. That, boy, you ain't kidding. That's right. And then the other thing is, I know Mike and Glenn have been talking about this, but uh, Chris, you want to tell everybody about our super seminar? We have a super seminar on October 29th at the Millennium Hotel. Um, It starts at 11 o'clock, runs through about 5 o'clock. We are going to have many breakout sessions. Uh, We're going to be there talking about small business, personal, health care. Mike and Glenn are going to have their people there talking about different aspects of of life too with investments. It's a great, great thing to attend. I'll tell you, knowledge is a is a remarkable thing to have. I mean, if you don't do it, that's up to you. But you can't do what you don't know to do, right? Yeah, right. And you know what's really great about working with the financial guys is they care about you. We care about you, and so it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to come and bring your questions. There's no obligation. Nobody's going to ask you to come and use us. We're not going to take your name down and start bothering you. The important thing is we want to disseminate information to you, and that's um, it, it was Mike and Glenn's idea that this would be a great way to do it, and we're happy to to help. We we are talking about health care. We're talking about Social Security. They have a Social Security specialist. So, I mean, there's so many things you could learn oh my gosh yeah and you know like you said knowledge is power and it's just a great idea opportunity to learn lots of tools and tricks of the trade and and information we're going to talk about health care and financial planning and all that good okay stuff. the other thing is i wanted to tell everybody <coughs> so social securities increase cost of living increase was just announced and the increase is going to be less than 1% in 2017. It's going to be 0.2%. So the average recipient is going to, their benefit's going to go up $2.60 a month. However, the Medicare Part B is also going to go up $27 a month. So in essence, (laughs) a Social Security recipient's going to 
earn is going to bring home about $24 less a month. Wow. And so that's really, really important. And again, those are things that we try to keep you abreast of. So, um, you know. Well, the year before they didn't raise it at all, but this time they're raising right. it. And they raised, that. and they raised the <laughs> Medicare Part B. So people, so seniors living on a fixed income, if you have a, a, an asset, if you have a home, maybe this is the time you want to look at a reverse mortgage, and we are very happy to help you with the reverse mortgage. Reverse mortgages, absolutely, if you have an existing mortgage they'll, and you're over the age of 62, they will pay off your first mortgage and you get to live in your house, and they will give you the equity uh, in a lump sum or pay you per month tax-free, um, and you can't uh, be kicked out of the house until um, you are no longer a resident there, if you understand what I'm saying. Yep. Okay? So um, seeing it's really tough for seniors, and so this is a great tool to put in your tool chest, and EG Tax will help you with that as well. Well, we got some calls here. Why don't we go to uh, Mickey? Hey, Mickey, how can we help you? Uh, oh, uh, we got Marty on the phone. Sorry. Oh, Marty. Hey, Marty. Oh, Marty, Marty you just turned into Mickey. <laughs> How can we help you, Marty? <laughs> um, my question is, uh, I'm somewhat disabled, and as a result, the old bathroom wasn't accommodating. I couldn't lift my legs out of the top mm-hmm. without falling and things like that. So we had to totally remodel our bathroom, which required plumbers, electricians, and all these things. Um is any of that tax deductible? Or? Right. You guys want to give them the good news? Sure, sure. Um, it it is, uh, but you, it's the cost that it, it's a complicated, not a complicated formula, but you have to look at what the value of your house was before you did it after. and the value of the house, what you did after. Um, and so say that it cost you $20,000 and your house went up $2,000 in value, you have an $18,000 medical deduction. On your itemized deduction. So the amount that it raised the value of your house, you're not allowed to take as a deduction, but that difference you can. Marty? You understand, Marty? Who have it appraised? All right. Well, first of all, it's got to be a bona fide medical expense. And so when you say you're sort of disabled, you don't, it, it has to, it would have to be something your doctor would back you up and say, and say, Marty needed grip rails, he needed uh, a higher potty, he needed, you know, for whatever your medical uh, reason is. So number one, you need that. Problem. Number two, if your home went up in value equal to the cost of the improvement, then you'd have no tax deduction. But if, you know, let's face it, grip rails and special uh, potties and and uh, those uh, you know, handicapped tubs. access things don't necessarily increase the value of the house. So what I'd suggest you do is you get an appraisal and find out how much they think your house uh, uh, went up in value. And then if it was a $20,000 improvement like uh, Tiff and Chris said, and the value of the house went up five thousand. Then you have a seven, a fifteen thousand dollar medical expense, which then is reduced by ten percent of your adjusted gross income. Okay, so uh, again, that would have to be. I'd have to have an appraiser come in and say. I, I would. I would absolutely. You really, in, in the event of an audit, you have to prove the increase in value, or if there was no increase in value. And if there was no increase, then all of it might be potentially eligible. Right. Yeah, we and it isn't the same kind of an appraisal that you'd order if you were getting a mortgage. This would just, you know, uh, there are some great appraisal uh, companies in town, and I would call and say, all I need to know is would somebody come out and take a look at what they think my house was worth now and how much the average house is in the neighborhood, and they'll give you, I can't believe it's going to cost too much money, okay. but it's definitely worthwhile. Question. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. You all do it. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Thanks, Tax. We're going to take a short break. 8030930, 8030930, star 930. And I know Mickey is waiting and Bob is waiting. And, uh, and we'll see you on the other side. Julius, the tax lady, I was waiting for the funeral procession there. That was a, that was kind of a draggy song. It starts off that way. 
It must. It must go into something good. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 in the cell phone. And now let us go to Mickey on line two. Hey, Mickey. Yes, uh, I had a question re- regarding required minimum distributions. Sure. I turned 70 in February. Okay. And I turned 70 and a half in August. Uh-huh. I retired in August. Uh-huh. Uh, I need to do an, a required minimum distribution this year. Is that correct? Not necessarily. Not you guys want to give them the lowdown? You have. You actually have until April 1st of the following year okay. to take out your first. But if you wait till like January through April 1st, then you that the next year you would have to take out two, which you may want to do because you just said you retired also. Yes. Your income may be higher this year, so your tax bracket may be higher. So it may actually save you money to take out two distributions in 2017 instead of... And do it before April 1st, the first one. Now, the second one, does that have to be done that year, by the end of that year, or do I need to do a second one the following year? No, no it, in in the, in that next year, if you wait till next year, 2017, you'd have to do the first one before April the first, and the next one before December 31st. Okay, so I do, I would need, and I plan to do that. I'm going to skip it this year. Yeah. I'll do two next year then. Right. Now, just another quick question regarding the uh, the distributions. I have a substantial 401k with the company that I just uh, retired from, but I also have a small uh, State Farm annuity and a small um, all-state IRA. Now, can I use the, can I cash those, if they cover it, can I cash those in and use those as my required minimum distributions? I mean, the, the, I, I actually, I would have to, I have to do a required min, minimum distribution based on the 401K and the annuity and the IRA, I believe. Right. So you can use whatever, it's the dollar amount that's important. So if your RMD is $5,000, then you have to take $5,000 out of the qualified, um, uh, uh, you know, pension plans or annuities that are making, that require the RMD. So whichever ones you take them out of, it's fine. You just cannot combine your IRA and Uh, your pension minimum distribution. that's correct. I'm sorry, say that again. I can't combine what? Your IRA distribution and your pension distribution as one. Those are two different animals. But the annuities and the IRA, you can... Annuities and pensions. The annuity and pensions, right. Okay. All right. Okay? Yes, thank you. Thanks for calling. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on the cell phone. And we have Bob from Orchard Park. Mr. Bob, on line three, how can we help you? Uh, I have the uh, question about the IRA distribution. Is is it going to be tax free this year? Did they pass that? You know, for if you give it to a charity. You mean the hundred thousand dollar rollover, up to a hundred thousand dollar rollover? Uh, when I take the money out of the IRA, which I'm required to, uh, mm-hmm. I already got the minimum amount. But I want to give it to charity like I've done different years. It's okay, but it has to be a direct rollover from your IRA to your charity, your church. I, I didn't hear you there, Esther. Chris, you want to it, say yep, it again? You have to, the money cannot go to you. It has to go right from your IRA no, but right it, to it's your church. the law for this. Yes, yes. That's, yes, it's that, allowable. It is allowable. Now, Esther, I'm one of the we call myself a senior senior citizen. I'm 89 years old. Still paying taxes on my Social Security every year for 30 years now. (laughs) A little over $25,000. I would hope somebody changes that law. (laughs) Well, so in order for you to have been paying taxes on your Social Security, it means that you would have enough other income that would make your Social Security taxable. So I will tell you, it sounds like you're a very blessed yeah. man. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be unhappy that you got to pay taxes on it, but um, uh, it, it means that you are pretty well suited in the other areas, and that's a real blessing. Yeah, but in a way, uh, the big increase you just mentioned on Social Security is... <laughs> the big increase, yeah. Me, as far as taxes at all... <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, if you were to take your minimum distribution yeah. and put it right to the charity, depending yeah. on your other income, yeah. that could help you save money, not paying tax on the Social Security. I, I, if you do the direct. Yeah. My minimum to yeah. the charity. So. 
Right. Okay. I'll, I cut down my taxes doing that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was smart. That's exactly right. Yep. And okay, the charity Bob? appreciated it. Hey, hey. Okay. All right, thank you. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 to cell phone. All right, let's talk about um, some of the things that are happening. Well, first of all, extension deadlines are approaching for individual returns, correct? Yep, that's the middle of October, and so you, if you filed an extension on your personal return, that's the automatic six-month deadline to get that return in. So we're making lots of appointments and doing lots of extensions. And don't forget, with your extension, if you determine that you'd have a balance due, you're supposed to pay that um, middle of April when filing deadline was upon us. So, you mean the extension? Yeah. yeah. When you, you filed the when extension. When they filed the extension, if you were going to have a balance due, you had to pay that In order then. for the extension to be worthwhile. Correct. Right? All right. The other thing is, and before we get to the other phone calls, I uh, wanted to make sure that people understand that if you're a, a somebody that wanted to open up a simple uh, IRA, that deadline is November the 1st. So you have to make sure if you're, if you're a company or you have a small business and you wanted to start opening, a, you wanted to fund a simple IRA, you want to make sure that you get that open by November the 1st. Now, you don't have to fund it with a lot of money. You know, just open it up so that when tax time comes next year, you can fund it. Right. right. But it has to be open by November the 1st. Yes, definitely, right? definitely. Okay, let's go no back to the phones, and we'll talk to Mr. Steve. Hey, Steve, how can we help you? Hi, Esther. Uh, nice to speak with you. I love your program. Thank you. Um, so I'll explain my situation. Um, so I'm 30 years old. Um, I just began a new job as a 1099 employee, mm-hmm. which is a new thing. Uh, my entire working career, I've always been a W-2 employee. Um, so one of the first things I did um, is I rolled over um, um, my IRA from my former employer um, into um, a Fidelity account, um, approximately 33000 into a Roth IRA, mm. 5000 into um, just a rollover IRA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... Um, what I've been doing, I've been at the, this position for about four months now. Um, like I said, this new job as a 1099 employee. What I've been doing is uh, every paycheck I receive, um, I go uh, 40%, 30%, 30%. 40%, you know, to my own personal bank account, 30% to savings, 30% um, for taxes. And I'm meeting with a tax professional next month. But I kind of wanted to talk to you and see if you could give me some insight. Um, as far, I mean, people have been telling me things from, um, you know, an S corp to. All right. Well, first of all, can I ask you something? Yeah. You said you're a, an, a 1099 employee. Yeah. So 1099 means you're self-employed, and right. employee means that you're somebody that works for somebody. Are you self-employed or are you working for somebody? I work for a company, um, and they classified me as a 1099 employee. All right. So they can classify you whatever they want, but the law is what really is what really counts, okay? Right. So may I ask um, what you do? I don't want to know the name of the company, but may I ask what you do? I'm a health care provider. Okay. So are you a doctor? No. 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 Lower, lower level. All right, so nurse, you do nursing? Yes. Um, okay, so whenever you work for a company and they, uh, they say to you, uh, Steve, we want you to go here, we, you, we're going to pay you $30 an hour, we're going we're to reimburse you for your mileage, uh, we want you to do this, uh, you have to do all the work, you can't have somebody else come in and become a nurse, I mean, you can't substitute your services with somebody else, can you? Besides somebody else in your own profession. Could right. somebody I mean, else you do your job? Steve, you can't say to your friend, Joe, hey, Joe, I can't make my patient this afternoon. Can you take over for me? No, no, I can't. Okay, so you can't substitute. Do they give you the tools with which to work? Um, well, do you go to a hospital? Where do you perform your services? Clinic. Yeah, I work in a clinic. clinic. All right, and so they do. It's not You're not paying rent at the clinic, are you? No. No. Okay. 
So would you guys not agree that this guy sounds like a common law employee? Yeah, Definitely. he does. Yeah. And All I right. gotta, I gotta tell you, you, especially with the new labor laws that are coming into effect December first, I was told this week. This is one of the areas they're cracking down on Good. is the 1099s. They're, they're cracking down on employees. They're saying even people who are legitimately self-employed, they're telling them you're not self-employed. You're co-employed with all these other people, and they want to start getting people on 1099s on W-2s. So the whole thing is, first of all, I guess, Steve, I'm not avoiding the tax issue. What I'm saying is it sounds to me like you're an employee. Now, I would go talk to my boss and say, you know, I was listening to a tax program on Saturday, and some guy called with a situation similar to mine, and they were saying that I was an employee, and I just don't want to get you in trouble because if – uh, the if with this big change in the federal labor labor well first of all you really it doesn't sound like you're 1099 legally anyway but if they should come and t- contact this doctor or, or clinic that's hiring you they th- ultimately the clinic could be shut down now there is an exception by the way Chris I don't know if you've read and some of these things uh, clinics and and health agencies are not being so uh, pushed into that salary requirement as many other employees, but still he sounds like a common law employee. Definitely. So that would be the first thing. I would have that conversation with my boss. Okay. And then, Steve, I want to chime <clears throat> in and say what you're doing sounds pretty right, how you're setting aside money for self-employment and you're setting aside money for you. <clears throat> that sounds good. And then don't forget... If you are going down this path, you can minus off all of your expenses. But the thing is, I don't think that he <coughs> is doing mm-hmm. the right thing because right. I don't think he is self-employed. <coughs> so w- what we got to do right now, Steve, is we got to take a short break for news. If you want to hang on, we'd, we'd continue this conversation. But I will tell you, it, it sounds to me like you should call us at the office on Monday, and we'll go over it more in more detail. But you don't sound self-employed at all, and we want to help you so that uh, we'll talk to your employer for you. Okay? Yeah, I'm actually... All right, we got a break for news right now. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady. If you want to hang on, we'll we'll get pick you up on the other side of the news. Until then, we'll see you on the other side. the tax lady from EG Tax, and we want to help you with whatever your tax issue can be, you know, and, and more than anything, just like we were talking with Steve, and I know he waited uh, until the other side of the break here, but it isn't so, <laughs> taxes are not easy, right guys? Um, not at all. It, it's not so much of what the employer is doing, because as an employer, I would love to make all my employees 1099. You know, except it's illegal. And so sometimes as an employee, you have to kind of help your employer understand that what they're doing isn't right. Because in the event that they do get uh, hauled in by New York State or the the Federal uh, Labor uh, Law uh, Commission, um, they'd end up with all kinds of fines, fines, penalties, and it's uh, a lose-lose situation, not a win-win. So the other thing is, in the event, Steve, so if we get Steve back here, yep, uh, Steve, thanks for waiting. Uh, in the event that it is determined that for some reason you are considered to be uh, self-employed, which seems to me not the case, but if it were, then what you have to do is, like Tiffany was saying, you can reduce all the income that they're paying you by your expenses, you know, your certifications, your continuing education, any travel that you might do from facility to facility. And on the bottom line, you're going to have to pay your own FICA and your income taxes, and you can also set aside money into a pension plan. So those are three things. But I guess the best thing to do, wouldn't you think that he should call and talk to us so we can help him because it's, like, really complicated? And and then, Steve, there's so – this is so important important to the IRS and to the government that when you actually file your return for 2016, you can actually include the income as regular income, W-2 income, and fill out a form to complete that says this is not 1099 income. It is regular, ordinary income, you know? Uh, so yeah, that, that's, Tiffany brings up a great point, Steve, because if, you, if your employer 
digs his heels in and says, oh, no, um, th this is it. We're, we'll, we'll take our chances with the, with the feds. Um, you can, when you file your return, protest the 1099. And, and actually, when your return is done, you can actually tax yourself as if it was wages. So then you would save uh, half of the FICA. Okay. Okay. Like I said, in researching this, I, I read that, you know, a lot of uh, employers got in trouble for misclassifying employees and had to pay a big fine. Mm -hmm. Assuming, though, that this is on the up and up and this is, um, uh, you know, proper, um, you know, things like um, um, putting money into health savings account. Um, mm -hmm. um, right now I'm not contributing to my Roth IRA. But I am contributing to um, my rollover. Um, well, you see, a Roth is not deductible. When you said that you rolled over your pension to a Roth, that's going to be taxable this year. Right. So whenever you roll over from a traditional pension to a Roth, that's going to be taxable as well. So in your situation, Steve, you really have some challenging uh, issues to deal with, and you want to make sure that you do a good job. So, again, we don't charge to talk to you, and we're very happy to talk to you. Um, so, so, but you're six, right. You're right, Steve. Those things can help to defer the, what you're looking at if you do go down that course, Right. But not if he puts money into a Roth. Roth, right, right, right. right. But the HSA, right. uh, anything like Esther said, uh, if you're getting All scrubs, continuing expenses. education, mileage, if you go from place to place, if you have right. an office and home. Okay. I, um, okay. To clarify one thing that you said. Um, now, my previous employer, um, I had been contributing probably like 80 20, um, 80 percent uh, after tax. 20% pre-tax. And mm -hmm. that so you have to figure out your basis, and all of the pre-tax contributions that you roll over that went into the Roth are going to be taxable. Well, that, no, that went in just to a rollover IRA. The, everything that had been paid tax on that I rolled over went into a Roth IRA. Okay, so... So you, you, you did two rollovers, one into a traditional IRA and one into a, a Roth? Correct, correct. Oh, then you're perfect. Okay. okay. Um, you're perfect, Steve. So what, what would you say, you know, like, assuming that it is legitimate, that it's a 1099 situation, uh, what, would you, what would be my biggest considerations? I would say what Esther mentioned in the beginning is to do an SCP because you can put up to 20% of your net profit where mm -hmm. the IRA is limited to only uh, – Fifty-five hundred dollars. And actually, if you're a if this, if you're a solo owner, you can do a solo four hundred one k and do fifty-three thousand. Those those were the two, the SEP and the solo um, that I've been reading. Sound mm -hmm. like the best options. Right. I mean, the solo IRA. If you got that kind of liquidity that you can set it aside, it's great. But un but here's the thing: if it's going to be a solo IRA or solo four hundred one k Roth, you get no benefit for it. Mm -hmm. So what you really need to do is look at it from a professional standpoint. You know, you're a professional, and you wouldn't want somebody to come in and say, gee, I think I got the mumps, and they got something else because they self-diagnosed. You need to look at the benefit of putting it into a tax deductible versus a taxable vehicle and look at your long-term uh, appreciation in the in your pension plan so you can make an intelligent decision okay okay um, one quick last question if I could um, do you feel that there's any advantage if I'm going to pay um, taxes biannually or annually um, do you feel that there's any advantage into putting that 30% portion um, that I'm setting aside into some sort of interest-bearing investment vehicle maybe CD or, or something that would offset tax liability in some way. I mean, anytime you can make money, legally, you should make money. Right. I mean, that's that's like a no-brainer. Any place you can make money, you want to make money because the bottom line, it isn't the taxes that's important. The bottom line is what you end up with after the taxes. Right. And one thing you got to remember is that the IRS wants their money quarterly when you're self-employed. So... If you don't pay them quarterly, they will penalize you when you file your tax return. Mm -hmm. So you would have to make sure you're going to make more money on your investments 
then it then what they would penalize you for. The IRS likes their money in equal periodic payments well, throughout the year. I was unaware. I, I didn't know there was a penalty associated with not. Right. The penalty is not so severe, but I will tell you, in the first year, if you were a W-2 employee, the first year there's kind of a one-time mess-up rule, so they're not going to penalize you. Uh-huh. Uh, but but what, what they're talking about from the estimated standpoint is absolutely true. The penalty isn't so severe. Like if you could make... 20% on your investments or 10% on the, that money, that would be great. But the penalty, as it gets, as it goes away from that one year where they give the, the uh, exception, the penalty gets a little larger until it's about 4% of your uh, tax liability. So you'd really have to be making more uh, than that uh, to make it worthwhile. So bottom line, I need to really sit down. This is a complicated situation. I would. I would. I don't care who you talk to, but you need to talk to a professional. All right, Esther. Okay. Your time. Thank you so much for help. Thank you, Steve. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on your cell phone. And we have, let's see, who's waiting here? Tim. Hey, uh, Tim. Yeah, Jim. Hey, Tim. Tim. Uh, no, Tim. Hey, Tim, how can we help you? Yeah, good afternoon. Um, Just to follow up to your 1099 thing, I just jumped in the, the show and I heard you talking about. 1099. Here's my situation. I work for a church, um, which is a tax exempt um, organization. Um, as a subcontractor working for that church, um, what, what what do you recommend? I mean, I, I I pay the tax at the end of the year on the 1099, so I, I kind of get hit pretty hard with that. Um, you do you think we should suggest to the church that we? Well, you see, do? see the thing is, Tim. It's not up to the church or the employer to say, oh, we don't think we're going to pay people this way because it costs us money. It is the law. And so if you are working and performing a function and they're paying you a certain amount of money and you can't substitute the person doing the work and they told you when to come and when to go and you're not holding yourself out for for like like a plumber going from one place to another, then you're a common law employee, and that Im, that church has to pay you on a W-2 and pay your FICA. Because to do it wrong would mean they were violating the law. And it doesn't make any difference that it's a non-for-profit. That doesn't make nope. any difference. <clears throat> That's what I was thinking. So. Yeah. So, so and I, again, I, you know, we have a really uh, great relationship with a lot of churches locally. And we're very happy to talk to your pastor, uh, the church board. You know, most of the time, the, when you're t- dealing with small employers, it's not that they're bad people, and it's not that they want to do things bad. They just don't know how to do it right. And so if they, mm-hmm. if somebody steps in and says, look, it, we can help you here. It's not hard. And you, once they have that little learning curve, maybe two weeks of doing it right, they go, oh, this is easy, and that's all it takes. Um, and so if you're out there and you're somebody that is being paid on a 1099 rather than on a W-2, if you give us a call, we will intercede on your behalf, and we certainly will for you, yeah. Tim. And, and, Tim, there's, like, some litmus tests. There's, like, little tests they do, like, does your employer tell you when to come to work, when to go home? Do they give you the items you need to perform your job? Do they tell you these are the rules? Though There's, like, little tests that they have, little caveats to ask yourself, are you a 1099 or are you a W-2 employee? Yes, yeah, so everything you just mentioned is all no. <laughs> okay. And- we make a schedule, and, you know, we perform our function kind of self-sufficiently. Um, I, I really want to divulge too much. You know, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. yeah. You I give us a call well, on I, Monday. We, we understand. Can... But, again, many times it's just that your employer doesn't know what to do. And, uh, you know, we're Christians, and we're very happy to help. So just let us know, okay? Outstanding. All right. Thanks, Tim. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on your cell phone. A couple of things we want to talk about. We are, here's things you should be doing. Um, if you're somebody that itemizes, the first thing you should think about doing, if you're thinking about buying a car, sales taxes are deductible. So rather than waiting till January or February to buy the car, if you buy it now, you'd be able to front load your itemized deductions with those sales taxes. Yeah, right? that's right. right. Even right. if you had bought a boat in the summertime, that would a also... A motorhome. 
Right. And so if you pay tax, sales taxes now of $3,063, you save $306 if you're in the 10% bracket. You'd save twice as much if you're in the 20% bracket. So, um, so that's something you might want to do. Pay your New York State estimates. We were talking about federal estimates being a penalty, but your New York State estimate paid before December the 31st is an itemized deduction. That's, That's right. Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. And so somebody that makes a New York State estimate of 6000 in the 25% bracket saves $1,500 in federal taxes. Now, you were going to owe this money anyway. Not, why not create a tax uh, benefit, right? That's uh, the other thing is clean out your closets. I mean, the holidays are coming. Christmas is coming. You're going to have new junk put in your house. Uh, make a good record of what you're giving. Correct. Oh, we, right. we had a couple of calls this week, and uh, there was somebody who called, and they had a fire in their home, and they were going to donate the granite, and they were going to donate the cupboards because they just had a new kitchen built before the fire. And so somebody came out and said the granite is not going to be good after so many years. So the charity write-off was going to be like $20,000. So we said, ah, you need an estimate, an appraisal done if it's over $5,000 that you're giving to charity. And you so, need to document mm-hmm. it. Right? And that's yep. right. You need that's to right. document it. And then there's something mm-hmm. about did you get reimbursed from the insurance company, right? That's right. That's I right. I mean, because if you just got paid for it, is there any basis in it? So uh, all that kind of stuff. So those are just a few little things that you should think about that really – um, it's just like living your life. Clean out your closets. Uh, do the documentation. Do your New York State estimates. If you're going to buy a car or a boat, like like Tiff and Chris were saying, do it before the end of the year for the extra uh, sales tax deduction. And I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back on the other side with your phone calls. <laughs> Hey, this is Mama Pajama. This is Esther Goulias, the tax lady from EG Tax. Want to get your move in for the last 10 I'm minutes of the show. You, Mama Pajama rolled out of bed. That, that's, a good, that's a good old song. Uh, I'm Esther Goulias, the tax lady from EG Tax with Tiffany Fabian, Christopher Fabian. We're talking about year-end tax stuff, 8030930. 8030930 star 930 in a cell phone. All right, here's something that nobody really understands what this means and um it, but it's really important. If you are paid on an accountable plan at work because maybe you're an outside salesperson or you have to go to branch offices and you have to submit your your expense report, then what happens is they don't the employer doesn't have to include that in your W2. Right? Right, right. But if you're paid on a non-accountable plan, which means they say, I just say, Chris, here's $1,000 a month. Go do what you're doing, and you don't have to account for it. Then what happens is that $1,000 a month ends up being put in your W-2. Yep, yep, added as income. Right, and so that's another thing. You know, we're talking like like the employee is supposed to talk to the employer, and I have to tell you, I think the employee should talk to the employer, especially if you're listening to Ask the Tax Lady and you come in and say to your boss, I think I should be on an accountable plan. It's true that you'd have to fill out an expense report, but the but the reimbursement does not have to be in your W-2 then. That's and right. if you're a non-itemizing taxpayer, it means you get completely shaft OLED, right? <laughs> yep, yeah. I mean, if you're on, if you're on a, a non-accountable, you could also be getting hit with AMT because that, of the higher income. And that's so true. Yeah. Yeah. And what is AMT? Alternative what is AMT? minimum tax. Go on. Chris. Alternative, Alternative minimum, minimum the nasty tax. tax that the government says, I don't care how much you make, you're going to pay this much in tax. I don't care how many write-offs you have under a business. It doesn't matter, yep. right? That's right. So... If you are somebody that gets reimbursed for your expenses, make sure you're on an, on an accountable plan because that's the best for you. That's one of the other things we want to talk about. And then let's see what else is my little thing here. Uh, pay up medical bills. If you've got large medical bills, uh, like the guy at the beginning of the show bathroom. who yep. remodeled his uh, bathroom, if, he, if it is a qualified medical expense, he should pay everything yeah, else. And, and then I... 
He should get his teeth done, his glasses done. Yeah. I want to say if you're a person who's a married couple and you both work and you have a lot of itemized deductions, it might be a time to think about married filing separate, filing too. separately. Yeah. Great point, yeah. great yeah. point, Tiff. Absolutely. And then the other thing is, and we say this almost every week, if you have a pension plan at work, join the pension. And if it's a... Um, if there, there's an employer match, make sure you put in the amount of the match so that you don't shoot yourself in the foot. Yep, yep, definitely, right? definitely. Even if you put it in and take yep. it out, you still yep. come out ahead. Okay, let's go to the phones, and we have who? Loretta. Loretta. Right? Loretta. Hey, Loretta, this is Esther. How can we help you? Hi, Esther. Hi. Uh, the Teamsters Pension Fund is trying to cut the pensions of the retirees and they're active. Yep. Uh, yep. We are a retiree, uh, and it would be like a $1,200 a month cut in our pension. Would we be able to take that as a loss on our taxes? No. No. And, and uh, now I will tell you why. Because all of the money that went into the pension plan was non-taxed already. So nobody, had you already paid taxes on it, then our answer would be different. It'd be like putting money into a Roth that's after tax. And if you had lost money on it and you closed out the plan, then you'd be able to take a, a, a deduction. But since you never paid taxes on the on the money that was uh, contributed into the plan, that means that even though they might have done bad planning uh, and you're going to suffer the loss, um, it was a potential loss and you're not entitled to it. I, I was listening to the radio yesterday, and there's a coal miners in I don't we'll say Pennsylvania, and they're trying to get all of their pension is is, is gone for yep. the pension fund. It's just it's it's debilitating. It's terrible. And you know that that brings me to a, another thing, uh, Loretta. Any time you can get control of your money uh, and roll it over to an IRA that you're accountable for, it's better than than leaving it with an uh, with a, an organization w that you have no control over. So I'm one of those people that thinks that if you can control it, at least if you make a bad decision, it was your decision to make. Um, but unfortunately, it's so sad what you because uh, we've been hearing this for some months now that the Teamsters uh, are threatening cutting back on those things. So very sorry about the news, but it's not going to be deductible. Treasury Department, we're just waiting to hear whether it's going to be denied or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is good. Is the PBGC going to pick it up? Uh, you know? Oh, but they, it's still going to be bad. You know, you're yeah. going to have a cut. Yeah, that's so sad. Well, if there's anything we can do, just give us a jingle. Okay, Loretta? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, dear. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 93rd in a cell phone. Another thing that you should need to do is... How about... I was Pardon? going to say one of your one of your infamous things is for the stay-at-home moms, get a job for oh, the single stay-at-home moms. Especially stay -at -home if you mom. have uh, children at children home. at home, and you are lower income kind of person, or maybe you're living on social security, and you or are, um, are child so. support. Get some taxable income so you get the earned income credit. Yep. Right. The other thing is, um, if you're somebody that has custodial and non-custodial children. In other words, they're living with mom and dad. The custodial parent, the parent that the, has the residential custody, is the one who's going to be able to claim those kids unless what? Uh, the custodial parent fills out a release of claim form to the non-custodial parent. And that form is? An 8332. And so what I suggest is now it's September, there's not this pressure during tax season mm -hmm. where dad comes over and says, can you please sign this for me? And she goes, no, I don't want to. You know, now you got some time. Now is the time to deal with it. Yeah, right? and, and on part B of the form, there's a for future future years so you can avoid the angst every year, you know. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if the divorce lawyers actually got yeah. that signed? And, yeah. and that's true. And if you're in the That's middle of a divorce, right, uh, it's important that somebody that is a tax specialist takes a look at that divorce decree. And we had a big situation that happened with one of our clients. Right, Chris? So you, 
the attorney wrote it up both ways. He oh, says yes. it's deductible alimony and it's it's and child it's support, and so uh, they're going to tax court over it. Right, right. You know, and and yeah, we went to audit, went to appeals, and they're saying we understand what you're saying. It's in black and white, but our black and white outrules your black and white, and so it's they, they're going to fight. And it. so it's important. Had we looked at that before the divorce, it would have been a horse of a different color. It's important to get that that second opinion because these these divorce uh, litigations go on for years and years and years. And you have to live with what was in that divorce decree. The other thing is tax plan for Christmas gifts. I mean, uh, let's say that you want to go to Florida. Um, you're thinking about moving to Florida and you go to, there for Christmas and you go for job interviews, your airfare would be deductible, part of your hotel would be deductible. Uh, maybe you needed you need uh, new furniture for your home office. That would be deductible. Uh, your new iPad for work, things of that nature. Those are things you can start looking at right now because we're getting into that time of year. But the important thing is, here's the thing, you need to tax plan. Yep. Right? Yep. And I will tell you, we don't charge you to tax plan. And so if you're uh, on your way to church right now and you say, you know what, Martha, we really should get somebody to take a look at this because you'd be surprised all the angles that, uh, you know, and we don't even have time to talk about the angles, yeah. all the angles out there that legally can reduce your tax liability and help you to make more money. That's right. And that's really the bottom line is we want to make sure that you make the most money that you possibly can, and, and that your finances look good. You have to ask the question. I just did an amendment for the other day for somebody who got a K-1, and he's going to get a K-1 every year. And so you, you got to know all the little pieces. And so he ended up owing a lot of money because when he originally filed, he didn't put the K-1 on there for a business that he's a partner in. So make right. sure you know all the pieces. So during if so if you should be somebody that thinks, you know, I really would like that year-end end tune-up, EG Tax does not charge you for that, and you can uh, you can give us a call at six three two seven eight eight six during the week, or you can go to our website at egtax.com, and you can be in the middle of a cocktail party, or you can be in the middle of a, of a birthday party, and Uncle Harry's talking to you about something and say, I don't know if that's true. You can just go to our website and ask a tax question, and if I'm anywhere near my uh, iPhone, which I carry diligently with me i will answer it right away and there's no charge you know we just want you to think about us, us as your resource a place that you can go to to get good reliable information i was just answering questions all day about a, a family whose uh, parent had gifted them the house 10 years ago and now it got sold and it wasn't in a life estate, so these kids are going to end up paying taxes on this. And so all those kind of things are so important. And, you know, part of what we do is we help you to talk to your employer, talk to your mom or dad. You know, we are the, we can be kind of that go-between for you to accomplish what you need. Okay? I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax. We'll see you next week. And again, if you need us during the week, give us a call. Have a great day. Bye-bye.